another ASMR video here on the channel. No, I should say welcome to the last ASMR video of 2023. Well, what a year, what a year it has been, honestly. And I know there's still a fair bit of time left of this year to go, but uh, I need a break, basically. My, uh, my work um, stops from uh, Christmas through to like the 3rd of Jan. And uh, I am knackered and I need a rest. Um, so this will be the last video of the year. Uh, before we return in 2024 to, to really smash it out, that is hoping for another another big year on the channel and I've already got so much content planned for next year uh, but uh, I'll probably do like a ramble video in the, in the first week of next year and talk about plans for the channel, content, etc, etc, etc but this evening I thought we could um, have a little bit of a chat I'm essentially going to be counting down my uh, my top movies from 2023. Now these are all 2023 releases. I've obviously watched a ton, a ton more movies this year, but I'm kind of a creature of comfort, a creature of habit. I have a tendency to watch movies I've seen before and stuff. So. But um, yeah, this is just 2023 releases and I should preface this I have not seen as many movies as I wanted to this year I think one of my sort of New Year's resolutions was to go to the cinema more and make use of the unlimited card and I have done that to an extent but obviously as, as you'll know I, I moved house I moved into my first home with my with my partner um, so there was a period where didn't really have too much time to go to the cinema and we kind of have to pick and choose our nights when to go but I've still managed to see a good amount I think so um yeah that is the plan I'm gonna be using my letterbox as a guide um don't bother asking for my letterbox it's it's not interesting at all and like I don't leave reviews or anything I just use it to create my own personal lists and give scores and keep track of all the movies I've watched. But before we begin with uh, counting down, I thought we're talking movies, I'm having a bit of a chat. It's the last video of the year. Why don't we have a beer? I'm recording this on a Wednesday night, so I am truly, truly off the rails. But I've got a nice, easy pale ale. I don't know if I've mentioned this on the channel before, but I love an ale, a pale ale. And this is from, uh, is that going to focus? Oh, there we go. Triple Point Brewing. Uh, this was a gift from my fiance's dad. It was a birthday present. A massive box of different beers from Triple Point Brewery, which is, uh, I believe it's an independent brewery in, in Sheffield. And they do amazing, amazing beers. If you're ever in Sheffield near Bramall Lane, go in. This is not an ad. But uh, we're going to crack this bad boy open. This one is a Cyrus or Cirrus, I think it is. Easy bail elm, 5%. Tropical, hoppy and billowy. Do not sure what billowy means, but uh, let's get this ball. Yeah, I've been 
basically been keeping a track. I've been making a playlist 2023 releases. Now I've probably missed some because there's probably some like Netflix releases and there you're gonna notice there's some pretty glaring omissions from this list like I didn't get around seeing past lives, I didn't get around seeing Napoleon, I didn't watch Saltburn. <coughs> it's really these last last two or three months where I've been slacking a little bit. Just a little bit. So let's begin. I have watched 
censored and like something was missing for me. But maybe I just love gore, maybe I've got an issue, maybe that's a me problem rather than a Megan problem, but I think the marketing for this was excellent, seeing her doing that dance on my TikTok every six wipes was... What a great time of the year. But, um, it didn't do it for me. So moving on to another horror movie uh, that I gave one and a half stars, but I actually really enjoyed this movie, but as a movie it sucks, but as an experience it's fun, which probably sums up a lot of the movies in the Conjuring universe, but it, it is The Nun 2. The Nun 2. Uh, this movie starts off okay and then it there's some good scares in it the the bit with the magazines was in the trailer but it still destroyed me let's say i my my underwear did a color change um but that ending the the way they resolve valak and the movie is just so much, I think I knocked so many, and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, Megan is a better complete movie than The Nun do, because, uh, but let me know if it, again, if it's just me, but like, the ending of this movie, The Nun, oh my god, it sucked, really sucked. So yeah, maybe actually on reflection I'd move Megan up a spot, so well done Megan. But that's it for one and a half stars. We now move on to two stars with a movie which I can't actually remember too much about. I probably watched this in the first... Oh, I watched it when I was in the new house. Maybe like June time. It's called Run Rabbit Run. This movie was really weird. It was really weird and it did have me guessing constantly where it was going to go. I just found that the climax was a little bit anticlimactic. Um, I won't bother too much. I see it's got an average rating of 2.3, which isn't great. Uh, I gave it a 2. Some of the acting in it was great and it was very creepy. Very creepy. And you were kind of guessing what was going to happen. I don't even fully remember. <laughs> I don't even fully remember how it ends. But I remember being like, oh, okay, that, whatever. Now next in, and number 19, is one I'm really quite disappointed with. I watched this, I mean really when it first came out, which was a few weeks ago. It's a David Fincher's latest movie, The Killer. I gave it two stars. Oh, this just really missed the mark for me. It's a very interesting character study on this assassin. Um, the, the, what's he called? I, f I forget his name. Um, but this just felt like a slog to get through. It felt like a chore at times. The pacing was so slow. Had some good action, some good set pieces, and that's why it's, it gets a couple of stars, but... When you've, when you've done movies like Fight Club 7, 7, one of my favourite thrillers of all time, widely regarded, one of the best thrillers of all time. When you come off the back of movies like those, you set your own bar so high. And look, some people will enjoy the slower nature of this. Like, I guess it's a nice departure from David Fincher's usually, usually quite scintillating thriller style. Yeah, this just missed for me. It just missed. I found it boring. Oh gosh, well speaking of missing, this is one that's really gonna <clears throat> annoy people. And number 18, I have Barbie, which I gave two and a half stars. I can see why people love this movie. I can completely understand why people would give it five stars, why people would give it four stars, etc, 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 but just for me, personally, I 
just found it a bit I don't really know I left my theatre kind of just like I think it was good but I also think it was equally kind of terrible but that made it good but then I'm reflecting on it I just don't think I really enjoyed it I thought it was a little bit like sensory overload a little bit like the sets are incredible I'm just Ken I think it might have been in my top 5 Spotify rap songs because <laughs> let's face it it's a banger and I think uh, I think they've just released Christmas versions <laughs> yeah, and look the message behind the movie excellent excellent I went into it having seen some backlash like oh it's making fun of men and it's like well no it isn't and you are an idiot but the messages behind the movie are great. For me, I just, uh, again, this is what's beautiful about opinions. I probably don't have a valid reason to give it two and a half stars, but yet something, something inside me <laughs> just knows that for me, this is a two and a half star movie with what I want to get out of watching a film. Like, I can probably die happy never watching that movie again. I'm sure I will watch it again at some point, but I could die happy not watching it again. <laughs> That's my review. <laughs> oh gosh, right. Okay, so we now have a flurry of movies. I gave three stars. Three stars is like, I had a good time watching this movie but I can't bring myself to give it three and a half and above because then you're getting a bit too close to five for my liking. <laughs> so the worst of my three stars coming in at number 17 is Elemental. Me and my partner just wanted to go to the cinema. There was nothing else on, so we went and watched this. And I was very, very surprised. Won't be able to rem remember the character's name, but the water guy, I found him so funny. So funny. There's a lot of cringe jokes that didn't land, but then there were a lot of decent jokes that did land. It was it was very hit and miss, which is why it's kind of sitting in the middle, the middle score. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. I thought the animations were beautiful. The worlds were so cool. I just I enjoyed it. It was a good feel good movie about you know the classic be who you want to be, Barbie girl. Don't do something just because it's been laid out for you on a plate kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I gave that three stars. Uh, next on my list, to be honest, and, and this is me backing out, not backing myself, but like a lot of these three stars can be interchangeable, like it is what it is. But at number 16, I have a haunting in Venice. This was a good time. This was a good time. I, I very much do enjoy Kenneth Branagh as Poirot. And this has an excellent cast. One criticism, Michelle Yeoh. Not in it anywhere near enough. Anywhere near enough. But everyone else does a good job. And I, I, I'm not familiar with the... Um, sorry, I think I've got something in my eye. I've never read the books and I'm not over familiar with the original story, so... The outcome, the twist, was a, a surprise to me. And I think it's very well done. I think stylistically it's very cool. I like this kind of world they've got going on. Um, because I enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express, but I thought Devon on the Nile sucked. I found it so boring. Um, oh, I think I'm dying. I don't know what's in my eye. Um, yeah, this was just, if you just want, like, a, a pretty easy to watch you done it, which actually has a few jump scares in. <laughs> Now this one's gonna, this one's gonna annoy some people because this is widely regarded as a terrible movie. But next on my list is Ant-Man Quantumanium. I actually quite enjoyed this movie. Um, and obviously this week just gone as me filming it, Jonathan Majors has been exposed as a horrible, horrible human being. And what a shame that, you know, he's burst onto the scene and he's evidently a wanker. Um, so they're going to have to recast. 
past him and everything, which is just like, Marvel must just be thinking, how have we managed to do this? Like, the whole point of this villain is they're all the same person, and the actor we hired to play that same person is a criminal. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that, but honestly, look, there's a lot of cringe in this movie. But I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I've watched it a couple of times now. I enjoy the whole world of the um, of the quantum realm, even though the uh, the the um, CGI is a little bit wonky at times. Yes, there's some cringy jokes. Did you know what this movie would be amazing if Cassie wasn't in it? Because because she was cringing me out the whole time. But like Kang, oh, I just wish we saw more scenes of Kang just destroying people because. That scene where he comes down on his like, uh, like teleport pad thingy, whatever, and just starts disintegrating people. I was like, yes, like I need more of this. And like I didn't have too much, but like I wasn't too bothered about, you know, Kang getting defeated because they were literally an army of technologically advanced ants. Look, I think my main thing with the MCU now is. The Infinity Saga, after Endgame, incredible, incredible, and even though we've got Secret Wars and whatnot coming up and X-Men to look forward to, I'm of the view that nothing, nothing will top the Infinity Saga, and no way home, nothing will, will top that, so why doesn't everybody just enjoy the MCU? I think people have a tendency, and it's within their right, if it's something you're passionate about, you're allowed to feel aggrieved if a, if a project is subpar, but I think it would just be so much better if we just enjoyed the movies, go to the movie, don't watch reviews on TikTok beforehand, don't, you know, make judgments before you watch them, and then don't solidify judgments based on what other people are saying, which I think a lot of people have a tendency to, to do. Just go and have fun. And that's what these movies are. Yes, they're silly, they're cringe, but it's Disney. Like, they cannot be. Newsflash. But nothing will come close to the Infinity Saga, even if they tried, even if they did this more serious tone. Which, apparently, they're doing with Echo, which I'll be intrigued to see. But yeah, I'm on Quantumania. I didn't eat it. I didn't eat it. Maybe three is too high. Three. Remember, MCU have separate rankings. So, like, Thor Ragnarok is a five star. But, like, Interstellar is a five-star movie. The two aren't really comparable. Oh, that beer is so good. Okay, next on my list. At number 14, another three-star movie is The Little Mermaid. I really enjoyed this. I thought... Ali... Bear, Ali Bailey? Ali Bailey? <laughs> um, I thought she killed it. Um, Aquafina as a bird. I can take it or leave it. Melissa McCarthy was a great choice for Ursula. Uh, again, like, I'm probably not the intended audience, so there are some scenes that were just cringe, but like, the music in it I thought was really great. I mean, the, the story of Little Mermaid is just a good one. And I think visually this was excellent. I think it's. I think it's better than Aladdin. It's not as good. I still think Jungle Book is probably the best live-action remake. Um, and I don't know about you, but I thought Lion King sucked. <laughs> but I, I'm not really going to go into any much more detail. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next. I have at number 13, Gran Turismo. This is just a, this is just a cool movie, and it's like one not to take too seriously. I think David David Arbor is excellent in it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a, it's a story about uh, uh, Gran Turismo, the old competitions for the best Gran Turismo drivers to, if they win, they can actually drive the car for, for Nissan, and it's actually based on a true story. And what I found really cool was the the driver who it's based on 
was actually the stunt double for the lead actor in this movie, which I found out afterwards, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, it's just like a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun movie, but actually there's some pretty decent acting moments in it where the emotion of the scene actually lands pretty well. I was kind of surprised at how, um, how affected I was by the sort of emo the bits that were meant to be emotional. I didn't cry, but like. I thought, I thought it was well done. It, it was better than I expected. I thought it was going to be cheesy, and it, it was to an extent, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And next, in at number 12, still on the three stars, I have the Super Mario Bros. movie. This was just great. This was a really good fan service movie as a story. It's probably not the strongest, it's literally about <laughs> Bowser wanting to marry Peach, which is kind of amazing. And I mean, Jack Black is just incredible. I I'd love a Bowser spin-off. Um, and, but you could spend this whole time really looking for little Easter eggs and details in the background, whether it be Mario Kart or Super Mario World. Is that the name of Super Mario World? I think it is. <coughs> It was just a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable experience now. Obviously, they're definitely going to be cashing in and doing Mario Cinematic Universe and an MCU, if you will. Which I don't really have too much of an issue with, like... And, and, and also, like, Chris Pratt as Mario. He got slated a bit, but I actually didn't mind him. I thought he was pretty good. Charlie Day as Luigi was great. To be honest, all the cast were Brett Keegan, Michael Gears, Toad. What a genius. <laughs> what a genius, genius casting. Uh, but yeah, that's my uh, number 12. Now, speaking of building a cinematic universe, at number 11, I have The Pope's Exorcist, <laughs> which I gave three stars. <laughs> which I know, yes, okay, objectively, it's probably a terrible film, but. I just had so, so much fun with this movie. It is totally bonkers and ridiculous. It kind of has the drag me to hell, oops, drag me to hell vibes. But like, it's still a bit more serious than that. It, um, oh man, Russell Crowe plays an exorcist who rides around on a moped. Like, need I say more? There's some funny scenes, are there scary scenes a little bit, but not really. Like, if you go into this movie just wanting to have fun and not take it seriously whatsoever, I guarantee you will love it. If you go into it wanting to analyse it and compare it against other movies, yeah, it, it sucks, okay? But like, me personally, I, <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I can't believe I've got Pope's Exorcist above David Fincher's The Killer and The Barbie Movie. But this is the beautiful thing about opinions. <laughs> so, we now move into my top ten out of the three stars. This is at three and a half stars now. At number ten, I have The Marvels. Yeah, this movie really surprised me. I'm gonna say it again. It was so much fun. A lot of people don't like the first Captain Marvel movie. I can see why people maybe think it's a little bit bland. I personally am biased because I've probably told this story before, but when I was in my third year of uni, I had just got my dissertation all finished, bound and submitted, and I had nothing else to do. So I went to the cinema by myself to watch Captain Marvel. So. I think I was just feeling so sort of elated and whatnot. I could have watched Boris Johnson having a shit for two hours and I would have gone, oh yeah, three and a half stars for you. Uh, weird example, I'm sorry. Um, but I don't think it's, it's as bad as everyone says. And honestly, this... This movie was great. Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, absolutely carries. She is amazing. Off camera, you 
know she's a she's a big Marvel nerd, and it and it really shines through on screen. Like you can tell she cares about the character and puts everything into it. And I thought it it gave a little bit more emotion to Carol Danvers a little bit. Monica's okay. I can take or leave her. Like she's okay. The post credit scene. Very excited for the ramifications of that. And I loved the singing planet bit. I just like it. it was so funny. I thought I just thought like again, MCU movies. It's funny to think we've gone from Iron Man to this. But just enjoy it, man. <laughs> enjoy the ride because the movies are low key kind of bonkers now. Now in at number nine, which gave three and a half. I couldn't bring myself to give it four stars. If it was a 3.75, I would give this a 3.75. And this is M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin, which I think came out in the latter part of 2022, but 2023 in some places. I think. This I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It, it had me guessing the whole way through why are these people crazy was it actually the end of the world? And I kind of loved the outcome. I liked the resolution. I liked what the truth turned out to be. And during this movie, there are some fantastic, fantastic um, filmmaking elements. Like, there are some set pieces with the camera movement goes like it like tracks the movement of the weapon oh my gosh that shit got me feeling some kind of way like oh there were just some bits in it and, and the acting in this was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and honestly it did shock me I found it quite shocking and I'm talking about it I quite like to watch it again actually but this was yeah this was a good M. Night Shyamalan movie he is very hit and miss, I think, with his movies, but I think this was definitely it. I think this was definitely it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed all of these, apparently. Okay. Number eight. Into the four stars now. The four stars. Next, I have Air. Air is about... Basically, the, uh, the 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 partnership, the beginning of the partnership between Nike and um, and, and Michael Jordan, the, the development of the Jordan shoe, the, the dialogue in this was just incredible. It had that kind of Moneyball vibe to it a little bit. Uh, Moneyball, amazing movie, by the way. Um, it had that vibe to it. I think Matt Damon is just a great actor. I, I, there was just something about this movie that I found so compelling and easy to watch. And I even watched the first half of it. My prime was buffering, so like it would slightly stutter and pause every like five seconds. But I still wanted to watch it because, like I said, the dialogue was is the strongest part of this. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else to say. It was a little while since I watched it, but uh, I gave it four stars. Uh, going back to the horror genre. I have Evil Dead Rise. I enjoy this movie a lot, and I'm a big fan of the Evil Dead franchise. Um, I like the originals. I haven't watched uh, the of the series and the spin-offs, but I've watched the original three. And I've watched the remake. I like both. Both are good. I like with the remake. The remakes we've gone a bit darker, but still kind of with the gore and whatnot, embracing the kind of, you know, kind of outrageous, ridiculous nature, but that is what these, like, demons are, they are, like, just outrageous, basically, uh, but Evil Dead Rise, man, one of, probably, one of the coolest title cards in history, it's just awesome, uh, and there are, yeah, there are some really good scares, and, like, really good gore, like, uh, look, at come to discover that I really like good violence and gore in movies, I think because I know it's not real, but equally it's like it's like Game of Thrones, it just kind of helps with that kind of world building and establishing of like an identity. Um, yeah, I thought 
this was great. I, uh, I think it might actually be a little bit better than the first one. Maybe. It, um, <laughs> has one scene. I don't mean to spoil it, but I just want to talk about it. So, uh, slight mild spoilers, but not really. But, like, there's a scene where the, the mum is possessed at this point. And she's trying to get in the flat. And the neighbours come out into the hall. And you see the boy, he's like, must be like 12, 13, go out of sight. And then he comes back inside with no arms. <laughs> it's so good. And that's what I mean. Like, it's horrifying, but also you kind of laugh. But it's like uneasy laughter. And I, I do like that blend. It's, it's a very clever blend. So, next we have at number six, the last of my four star movies. I have Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, this would be a five star movie if it wasn't so long. It, it's as simple as that. And I'm going to contradict myself here because Oppenheimer is still yet to come on it. And, yeah, and that is a long movie, but Oppenheimer flew by for me. Um, but we'll get to that. Killers of the Flower Moon. I struggled to think off the top of my head what could be cut out, but the last 45 minutes of this, I was just like, oh, okay, we're, we're really, like, crawling there. As a movie, it is phenomenal. The, the cinematography, the acting, I actually think Leo DiCaprio is one of his, like, honestly, he's had a lot of good roles, but it's one of his best roles. I, I found him disgusting and scary, but you also kind of pity him a little bit. Oh, I thought it was a genius performance. Robert De Niro, fantastic as the kind of villain in the background, kind of. And Lily Gladstone was fantastic as well. But literally, it, it kind of, uh, yeah, it just went on a little bit too long. The first half of this, I was there. I was like, oh my gosh, this could, this could, this is a five star. It just dropped off a little bit for me. Just dropped off a little bit for me. But I can totally see why people would give this five stars and why it would be some people's best movie of the year. Um, I think maybe I'm just impatient with that kind of material, but a, a fascinating, fascinating story and an important one of that because it was a horrific time where white Americans were like vultures and, and this movie does a fantastic job at making you hate them and, and really empathising with the, you know, with the Osage, Osage, that's it. Um, but yeah, still a fantastic movie, great movie, but it just loses that star because it just went on a little bit too long. It did pick up when Brendan Fraser came on screen and I got excited, but he... I don't want to badmouth my boy because I love him so much, but he was kind of bad in this. His performance felt forced, like not great. I don't know, maybe I was just done with the, um, the movie at this point. So, we move into my top five. Um, we have three four and a half star movies and two five star movies. was my biggest surprise of the year and it is the latest movie on my list I went and watched this two days ago it is Wonka okay going into this movie I thought it was gonna be cringe for kids I'd, I'd seen the trailer and Timothy looked very very cringy as way Wonka but I wanted to go and see it because I actually went to the London premiere. I was on the red carpet, not on it, but like I was at the barrier with the 
that he was right there. I said hello to Rowan Atkinson. I got a picture with Chris MD. Because <laughs> there was like an influencer walkway and an actor walkway and we were on the influencer side. Um, so I got a picture with Chris MD, if you know who he is. Um, and yeah, like just saw like Olivia Colman and various other famous people. Uh, and that was a, a whole lot of fun. So like I felt like I like need to go and see this movie. Oh my gosh, I was just so surprised. It is so joyful. I also didn't know it was a musical, so that caught me a little bit off, off guard when, when Dimmer Day breaks out into song, I was shooketh. But it was a good surprise. He, he absolutely killed it, and it, it turns out the cringy bits in the trailer were his most cringy parts. I thought he did a fantastic job as a young Willy Wonka, honestly. The songs were great. Everyone gives such a good performance. Olivia Goldman, Rowan Atkinson's not on screen too much, but when he is, you just you can't help but love him. Um, oh, I forget the actor's name. Joseph something, maybe. Johnson from Peep Show. Amazing, amazing villain. They're, they're just, the, the cast is just incredible. Incredible. Only criticism is not enough. And Bullen you grow he's <laughs> not in it too much but wow and and one thing that really surprised me about this movie is the emotion oh my gosh like do i come clean yeah let's come, let's come clean uh, i shed a tear that i knew the ending was coming or like the not the ending because it's a prequel but like the thing that happens towards the end and I just looked at my partner and she was like, crying as well. <laughs> um, and I came out of it and I was like, I can't believe how much better that was than I thought it was going to be. So, like, honestly, it's not a Christmas movie, but I'd urge you to go and see it. It just, it just, it's just absolutely joyful, is the word. Um, and I gave it four and a half, because I loved it. There we go. That's my life story over. Right. Number four. I have put with four and a half stars again. I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. What a um what a what a beautiful, beautiful end to the Guardians trilogy. Honestly, as much as it pains me because I love the Guardians. I'd be happy if we never saw them again, because I think it was just such a, like that trilogy, I think, oh no, is it the best trilogy, it might well be, you know, in the MCU, because, oh, like, I love them all, literally today, I was in a rough trade, which is like a vinyl, a vinyl store, and they had a big sale, on, and I picked up uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Deluxe Edition, on vinyl, because I recently got a record player for my birthday. Let me know if you'd like to see a vinyl collection. My, my collection is slowly but surely getting there. Um, but yeah, this movie, so funny. The first F-bomb in the, in the MCU. And uh, the, the emotion in this movie, my gosh. And dog days are over. I never liked that song. I know, absolutely love that song. What a genius, genius choice. Like, the amount of joy but in that scene, but it's also quite melancholy because you know it's the end. Wow, James Gunn just what, just... what a fantastic, fantastic achievement. And there's also some amazing filmmaking aspects, like that one day could all Wi-Fi scene, like... It really just flexed all its muscles and shows that, you know, post game we can have incredible, incredible movies. I, I've i actually only watched this once and it was in cinema because... Uh, it's the same with No... Although I would have watched No Home five times in the cinema, so that's not the same. But, like... It was just such, like, emotional experience for me, Guardians, that I kind of like having just that one time that I've watched it being like the time, I will of course go back and watch it again, but um, yeah, amazing, amazing movie, it, it's very close between fourth and third place for me, but I wanted to give the advantage to the horror movie, which technically I think might be 2022, but it didn't come out in cinemas in the UK till 2023, I don't think. 
their skits and stuff on YouTube. So I was instantly like, I'm there, I'm gonna support them. But this movie was just absolutely fantastic. It was creepy. I, I, I just love that it's like, it's an analogy for like drug addiction, but instead of being addicted to drugs, they're addicted to possession. It's, it's just, it's just genius. And there were just so many cool stylistic things about it. It was brutal. The gore in it was crazy, as you've discovered. I like gore. <laughs> yeah, like the scene where he smashes his head on the table, like his it shocked me. I was like, oh, we, we're going that far, are we? Okay, lovely. There were scenes that made me uncomfortable. There were, it made me laugh. The chemistry between the actors felt so, so natural. And I think Talk Do Me, Talk To Me Do, has uh, been greenlit, which I'm all for, because, like, you can just keep telling cool stories with different, like, entities that come through the, 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 the feet of the hand. I think a trilogy is planned, so... I'd like to see the origins, I like, I would love one to be a prequel and see origins of the, of the hand. But I, I, I kind of like that we don't get too much, like, there's no wasting time. Oh, we have to find out where, where this hand came from and how we can stop it. Like, it's all just kind of like rumours. Um... Both, like in terms of its origin and how you combat it. I just loved it. I found it refreshing. Honestly, so many horror movies are so unoriginal. I, I, I found it a joy to watch. And very scary. Very scary. Now, you're number one and two. Picking which one to put in front of the other is like picking a favourite child. I adore both of these movies and to be quite frank both of them probably no yeah probably maybe definitely get into my top 10 of all time um so we'll just talk about them but the one i have in the number two is oppenheimer me and my friend went and watched this at the Odeon Lux in Leicester Square, which if you don't know is where they have all the, all the UK premieres and stuff. Um, so, literally, and we were sat under one of the speakers, and goodness me, this movie is just an absolute triumph, I think, to take a three hour historic biopic and make it so captivating and that the time just flies by is no easy thing to do. The way Nolan constructs his scenes in this and the dialogue and it's always the dialogue. Like, I feel like there's always like a score in the background and that it helps the movie just like rattle along. There's no like stopping in the music. Can you hear the music? Um, it's a uh, Just, it astounded me when it was the end, and my gosh, that end, like, it left me questioning everything. Um, and I can't tell you how excited I am to get this on vinyl, the, the score for this, Ludwig Goranson, oh my gosh, like, you are a genius. Like, Can You Hear The Music is obviously a great one, but oh, I can't remember the name, but there's another one, but there are, there's just fantastic, and obviously the stars are the cast. I think Gillian deserves the um, the Oscar, but honestly, shout out to, oh, I forget the actor's name, but is this character called Roger Robb, the one who's like drilling him in the, uh, in the hearing, oh my goodness me, amazing, amazing performance, is it Clark, something Clark, let me find this out, um, Rami Malek pops up and gives a little performance, Casey Affleck pops up and gives a good performance. Jason Clark, that's it. Roger Robb, amazing. Honestly, probably my favourite performance of the movie. Um, oh, Robert Downey as well, like, his Albert slash speech at the end, like, is him throwing down the gauntlet, like, give me, give me that Oscar nom. He was fantastic. It was just a, just a 
just a beautiful, beautifully shot. I did watch it as Christopher Nolan intended in, was it 35mm or whatever the, whatever the thing in the IMAX Lux uh, they show. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful movie, a, 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 a real like moment in filmmaking, I feel. And look, again, totally get, like I said with Barbie, um, totally get why people wouldn't like this movie and why they would say it's overrated and boring. I totally get that. It just totally depends on what you want out of a movie. And for me, like, this just ticked all the boxes. I thought it was fantastic. And at number one, you can probably guess what it is. I, uh, drumroll. Across the Spider-Verse. Oops, sorry. Across the Spider-Verse. Um, this movie is just absolutely fantastic. From the voice acting to the to just how far the art styles and animations have come from the first one. The first one is still fantastic, and I still prefer Into the Spider Verse. Like Into the Spider Verse, I just feel it's just like the perfect superhero movie. It's just, oh, it's just amazing. But across the Spider Verse, visually, is far superior. The, all the scenes in Gwen's world, uh, it's, it's just, it's just absolutely genius. The score in this, Daniel Pemberton, you naughty, naughty man. <laughs> like, again, I've listened to this soundtrack so much, Metro booming as well, wow, like, what a job with the soundtrack. Amazing, amazing. Um, that entrance with Spider 2099 gave me chills. Even like the little cameos, like you know a movie's fantastic when the cameos aren't really the thing everyone talks most about. Obviously seeing Andrew, I love just seeing my boy Andrew on screen and uh, the little confirmation of like an MCU prowler, like so that fan service wise was great, but this movie is just absolutely fantastic. And and to take a villain it's really kinda of ridiculous. And his origin story is he got hit in the head with a bagel. But then by the end is this terrifying entity. Absolute, absolute genius. But, um... Yeah, like, there's generally not too much to say. Like, I, I genuinely think this is a perfect... Well, it's not a perfect movie because it's not complete. Because it does end on a cliffhanger. But genuinely, if, um, what was the third one called? I can't remember what the third one's called, but if this third one is a five star, I genuinely think these three movies could be the best trilogy of all time. Better than the Dark Knight trilogy, honestly. Because there wouldn't have been even an ounce of a miss between any, any of them. So, we will see. But, my camera's gonna die, one sec. And it's my list. I know there's going to be, there's plenty, plenty controversial takes in there, but find me, write in the comments, call me an idiot, but tell me why, because there's nothing I love more than talking about movies, so let's have a discussion. Open my eyes to why Barbie is a five star, tell me why the Pope's Exorcist is a half star, although I will die on this hill. The Pope's Exorcist is a fun movie. Yeah, plenty of movies I missed this year. Next year I'm going to be at that cinema way more. So this will probably be a longer video this time next year. And there goes the stomach. Beautiful. But yeah, favourite movie. Across the Spider-Man slash Oppenheimer. Worst movie. Peter Pan and Wendy. And biggest surprise, I would say Wonka. Favourite performance. These are, I, I should have planned this before, that's a good idea. Favourite performance. Either. Yeah, either Jason Calacas, Roger Robb, or. Maybe Leo in Killers of the Flower Moon. He just was brilliant, so disgusting.
exhausting. subscribe.